Hi, we are at day 7 of upskill in GCP. In today's topic, we will cover about the GCP SDK. So, it's a CLI service which would come very handy when we want to automate day-to-day uh, -day work. It can be of querying the resources, it can be of uh, creating the resource quickly. Uh, it comes very, very handy. So, we are going to explore that option only today. So, We'll be focusing more about the CLA based approach for today. Okay, so how to do it. Uh, so to install the uh, Google Cloud CLA, you can uh, first you can go to the reference link, which is cloud.google.com slash SDK. That gives you the installation page. If you go there, uh, you can search based on your uh, the OS and then choose uh, which one you want to do it. So in my case, it would be like Mac OS. You can uh, go ahead on that specific topic. Okay, so you don't even need to install it locally. Uh, GCP also provides you an option to run it in the console itself. How to do that? Let's all based approach. How to do it is like if you go to the console and if you look at the top one, it's called as activate cloud cell, this specific logo. So click this and it's going to say, sorry, continue activating it. And this is free for all users, which means we don't need to pay any extra for doing the automation stuff. So let's give uh, continue and it's going to bring us the uh, cell scripting kind of infrastructure over here. Got it. So now we have the uh, cell scripting running over here. And here by default, the G Cloud SDK is being installed. The, the guide of how to use the commands for the G Cloud SDK can be found under this web page cloud.google.com slash SDK slash G Cloud slash reference. So if you see, I can go for any specific uh, uh, service and then uh, look for the specific operation and then uh, get to know like what operation I need to get performed. So it's going to be uh, straightforward of getting the instruction. So if you see like if I do uh, this specific command, then it's going to uh, delete the batch run of specific task. You can also do one more thing. Uh, if I go to the one, you can check for G Cloud space help. Then it's going to uh, give you the options available, like how it is uh, the operation is performed and what are the uh, parameters to expect and if it is mandatory or not. So those kind of things. Okay, let's try uh, some basic steps within the projects. So if I want to uh, list the project like what are the projects available within my uh, the GCP account let's say let's look for under GC Cloud projects list and then it's going to say that uh, G Cloud projects list and then we can give uh, sort by stuff right so now let's go for the CLI and if I do uh, G Cloud projects list then it's going to execute and give me the the project ID, name, and project number. So let's try to create one project. So if I go for create, and it's going to ask for details around a few of those. Let's see. So now if you see that, it's asked for G Cloud projects create, and then uh, the sample one name and labels, right? So here, if you see, uh, this is going to be the ID of the project and this is going to be the name of the project and stuff so let's copy this and let's paste this and what i'm going to do is let's say let's edit it right so we want to keep the id and if you recall of our first session the id should be unique not specific to our account but the global one so let's keep it as ev the iphone sdk iphone demo and name it let's keep it as EV space SDK and labels equal to type equal to SDK, right? So let's see if it able to create the project using the SDK, right? So let's let's try it out. So it's executing now. Boom! It's created. So if I uh, refresh the UI. And let's leave page, it's fine. We can go back to this one. So, but we just want to see whether the project got created or not. So, 
it says finish successfully. So I really want to be able to see the projects, right? So it should be something called SDK. You see, the project got created and it exists now. For some reason, okay, it's a recent. We want to go with all and then we could see the new project which created. So ideally, if you want to create a new project, you want to do uh, click number one, new project, give the name, choose the organization and then click. So with the help of SDK, all we could do is just, uh, you know, uh, programming it. So uh, we also made a video in the past around uh, using uh, Bash with CLA automation. So you can uh, try to check this out video, like how we combined it. You can use the same logic to automate, uh, uh, combine the Bash with uh, the GCP's SDK and do the magic of uh, automation part. The concept is simple. So once your foundation is strong, uh, irrespective of what cloud you are using, you can just excel in that. Okay, so this one is an example of uh, taking projects as an example. We tried creating a new project using SDK. Uh, the same thing can be done locally as well. So for which we want to uh, install our SDK part, right? So uh, we can go for the installation guide, uh, which we have seen in the past, which is going to be gcloud SDK. The first page, which would be the uh, install the gcloud SDK, the Mac OS, you want to do it. So they talk about having the Python version 3 installed and having the specific one. So in our case, uh, do they have brew installed? I don't think they have that brew option. Uh, so in my case, I already have the Python uh, v3 installed. We just need to know which Mac OS we have it. So this one is for M1 Silicon. This is what I'm using. So I'm going to download this one. So I'll keep it in desktop. And all I need to do is extract that to any location, file system on Mac OS, and then to replace existing installation, remove, uh, we don't have the existing one. And then all you need to do is use installation script to add uh, to your path. You can opt in completion of your cell script using statistics. So we want to use this specific one and okay. So this one is talking about uh, the directly installation of part or directly execution of the part. So let's try to uh, archive unarchive it. So Let's try to open that. So if I bring it, cool. So we could see that uh, this is a specific one, and then we have something called installed at SS script over here. So as per the execution part, we want to run this specific script. Okay, so let's do that. To do that, let's go for desktop and then the file name you want to do it which is this one let's run it out you see it's ask about welcome to this one improve the i would say no for now let's not report it um let's keep it as yes enter a path to leave i'll keep it as empty uh okay let's keep yes and Let's ask for the password. Let me enter the password. Okay, let's see if it the installation gets completed or not. Because all I did is like download it and then I just follow the in, instruction given in the screen, right? So let's see. So it's hardly taking a matter of seconds to download the package, install the dependencies. Boom. So to know whether it's working or not, we can use the command gcloud help, which says command not found. So, okay, so it says uh, either we can use gcloud init or we want to use this specific one. Let's do this. Uh, 
or let's keep help let's try it out whether it helps okay so now if you see our the g cloud is being uh, installed in this specific path so that's why we in order to trigger the g cloud command we want to use this specific uh, value so you can also set an alias for the specific path or you can configure your uh, system path to say a g cloud keyword to the specific location so two ways you can handle it for now for this specific demo i will keep as it is and to work on it first we would do is git uh, in it so what is going to give us is it will be asking us to log in for our credentials to be get passed so you see you might sign in to continue would like to sign in so if i give s it's going to uh, take me to the browser url and let's keep this i'm going to sign into the url first i'll be blurring this out and so now we got the screen saying that you are now authenticated with the cli so if i go now i could see enter the numeric just keep uh even a demo for the projects to use either you can keep a default one or for now i'll just keep the uh the project to use i will keep do you want to configure a default compute region i would say no for now and cool so let's try to create the similar project which we did right so what we did is we tried using uh, g cloud projects sdk so let's try to from the local machine let's try to create a new project and see if we can able to uh, create it or not so now i'm going to keep it as uh, sdk local as the id and then the name i'm going to keep it as uh, e with i sdk local and then the type also will keep it as sdk local so that uh, this will be done okay so now, now the problem is instead of g cloud i given this specific one so i need to use this stuff so let's try running it out to see whether it's successful from our local machine or not so it's running the same way like how we seen the console it's running it's enabling the service and it's finished successfully so now if you go to the console and let's look for it all and i need to refresh the page to get it we go to the console and look for this all uh we should be able to see yeah we could be able to see that ev the sdk local a new project is created with a new id which we are given from the uh, local system and in case if the sdk is getting updated we want to keep up to date you can use a command called uh, uh, components so it would be uh, same as uh, the g cloud path followed by components and then update which means uh, it's going to uh, fetch the it's going to fetch the latest version from the internet and update you uh, the gcp cli for you okay so that's the beginner guide to set up the uh, sdk g cloud and the documentations you want to go and refer so you can uh, refer the documentation the g cloud uh, reference page and then uh, based on the service so we have seen about uh, projects same way the same concept applies for each and every uh, service every task you have the custom page with the custom example and what parameters needed what parameters not needed everything is been uh, documented well versed in case in few cases uh, the the variables can be like more repeated for example uh, you you might be need to pass the the project name which might be like more repeated the the region might be like more repeated so what you can do is uh, gcp provide you something option called setting the variable so to do that uh, you would need to use uh, the path or the the g cloud stuff which you uh, do let me cancel it for now so you need to do this one or the the g cloud path and then you need to say set and then the variable name so if the argument name is uh, project you would say project if the attribute name is something different let's take a scenario of uh, g cloud projects right let's take an example the parameter you might be passing 
and let's say you want to say that for every time the label should be something uh, e with i so then i can keep the space parameter like uh, iphone iphone labels uh, set it as uh, the same value so that i don't need to explicitly pass the specific labels on each of the uh, cli uh, command i pass it so you can use that specific value like uh, uh, setting the value of a specific parameter uh, to it okay so we saw how to run it in the cli how to run it in the console and how to get started with the guide uh, i would highly recommend uh, go and check our another video as well which is on uh, uh, it says AWS CLI automation plus bash scripting, but the core concept remains same. It's about CLI. How you can use the CLI in our case, it's going to be GCP SDK, uh, which, are, which is nothing but again the CLI, how you can combine it with the uh, bash scripting to, you know, power up your automation skills. If you are following our session, if you think it's highly valuable, I would highly appreciate if you can leave a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment of your opinion, view, what topic we can cover in the next session and also share it with your peers. Thanks.